Andrew Yang jumped into the presidential race with no political experience, but he outlasted three governors, two senators, and five members of Congress. Here to tell us why he wants every American to join the Yang gang, please welcome presidential candidate Andrew Yang. <laughs> Thanks yeah, for having yeah. me. Good to see you, man. Yeah. Of course. Always Plus, my, my wife is backstage, and uh, she's a big fan, so this is a thrill. Well, she's oh, yeah. coming on after yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah she's not just backstage. She'll be joining us yeah. on, the, yeah. <laughs> on the, the panel. But before she comes out, we got to get to Iran, because that is really the issue that the world is talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and you want the job of president of this country, one of the main issues you would be dealing with. Um, I want to ask, because we've been talking about, is the cost worth it to taking out General Soleimani, number two in command there? If you were in Trump's position, what would you have done? 75% of Americans do not want a war with Iran. So we should not be responding disproportionately in a way that elevates the conflict and tension in the region. We need to bring Iran back to the table and invest in a diplomatic solution. So you wouldn't have killed him? I would not have, no. I think it was a mistake. But you know, it's interesting that they, they actually assassinated the guy. He's a terrible man. I get it. But they assassinated him in full view of the world. Don't they usually do these, uh, you know, secretively when they assassinate a head of state as he might be considered because he was a general? Yeah, that's why it was so disproportionate. Why, why would they do that? Well, the, the story seems to be that uh, a number of options were presented to President Trump, and he chose the most dramatic option that mm -hmm. even the military leaders would never have expected him why, to choose. Why, does that help him in some way? Uh, well, ordinarily, apparently they're presenting these extreme solutions to try and direct him towards something more reasonable, but in this case he chose the most extreme. Mm. Uh, and that's not the way we should be making decisions, particularly when our uh, soldiers' lives are at stake. So do you think this is one of those wag-the-dog moments that what people are talking about? Well, I certainly hope you would you know never have made means, this... what that means, right? Where you start a war to distract? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Just I certainly hope you would never have made this kind of decision for uh, political goals. Uh, I think it was a mistake, and hopefully we can pull Iran back from the brink and, again, bring everyone to the table. All right. Uh, Mr. Yang, one of the concerns with President Trump for me since day one is that he has no foreign policy experience. Obviously, he was a failed businessman. Um, you also are a you're a successful businessman. <laughs> you're a businessman, um, but you don't have foreign policy experience. And given that it seems that tensions are rising, or at least it's been escalated, how do you think the American people can trust another businessman? I think Americans are looking for a commander in chief with the right temperament, judgment, and values. I would push the power to declare war back to Congress where it belongs in our Constitution. Mm -hmm. We've been in a constant state of armed conflict for almost 20 years, and that's not the will of the American people. When I'm out campaigning across the country, people say we need to end the forever wars and bring our troops home, invest those resources right here at home. We spent over $6 trillion in the Middle East. Think about what that could have done for our families and communities over the last number of years. And I've been meeting with thousands of veterans who, when they come home, are still struggling with health issues, mm -hmm. PTSD, yeah. mm -hmm. trying to find jobs and opportunities. It's not just the resources, it's the human cost. Would you put people in the military in your cabinet or with military experience? Of course. Okay. Uh, we need to have people at the highest levels of government who have that kind of experience. Well, we had General Mattis. Unfortunately, he's not there anymore. He was the voice of reason. And what he said was that if you invest more in diplomacy, you have to spend right. less on ammunition. Well, and that's exactly where we should be heading. That's right. He did say that. He yeah. did say that. So, I mentioned at the beginning that you have outlasted many Washington <laughs> insiders running for the nomination. Yet, Somehow you're not getting the same kind of coverage. Are you okay with that? Uh, is it easier to do what you need to do outside of the glare of people saying, well, why isn't he here when he should be here? Or this one's here and you're not here and you're the... Is it just easier to just do what you're doing? Because people seem to hear what you're saying. They're asking smart questions and they don't seem to have the same distaste for you as a candidate, as I've seen, <laughs> you know, with so many others. 
Well, the fact is Americans have been looking for some kind of change for years now. And it's not just this past cycle with Trump and Sanders. It's even Barack Obama's victory in 08. We can recognize that our politicians and our government in D.C. are years behind the curve in terms of addressing the real challenges that we're seeing around us every day. And that's one reason why I'm doing so well. It's certainly not that the media has been fueling my, my rise, mm -hmm. though full credit to you all, <laughs> because you all have been an exception to this. this. Uh, I've been incredibly grateful for uh, being able to come here on the show. Well, your like fundraising numbers candidates. alone, yeah. you should be treated in the same capacity. I think you only uh, raised $9 million less than Joe Biden. I yeah. mean, I, I, I do think the hashtag Yang Blackout is something that was real. But I am um, a numbers guy. I agree. Uh, Our numbers <laughs> are <laughs> Congratulations. But uh, the, a little low. Uh, the media keeps talking about the lack of diversity in the Democratic field, and you were the only person <laughs> of color who was, just give me a, a second, that were qualified for the last debate. Um, is being an Asian man not diverse enough for the media? I don't understand why you're completely excluded from this. Uh, well, search me on this. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I, I'm very proud to be the first Asian American yeah. man to run for president as a Democrat. Uh, I'm the son of immigrants myself, and I certainly think that my perspective uh, on the American dream is something that we should all be very, very proud of. My father grew up on a peanut farm in Asia with no floor, uh, and here I am running for president. Mm -hmm. yeah. why, why do you think, um, why do you think, given the fact that you have raised so much money, that your number, that you're still, uh, and you are the most diverse candidate that has raised this much money, it's still in the race, um, why your polling numbers are still low? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm new to most Americans, and as soon as people find out more about me and my vision for the country, how we need to humanize our economy and make it work for us and our families, then we see consistent uh, increases in support. And Sunny, one of the fun things is a survey just came out that said I'm among the least disappointing candidates in the field. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yes. Which is, like something Thanks, like, like almost 90% of Democrats said I would be fine with Andrew Yang as the nominee. And I almost jumped for joy when I saw that really? number. Yeah. I, and just, just a follow up, you know, you, you do need the support of the black community, right? Mm -hmm. It's sort of the, the, the backbone of the Democratic Party. Right now, you're polling at 3% with black voters, around the same number as Mayor Pete and Mayor Bloomberg, who've had real problems with the community. How do you turn that number around? How do you raise that number? I need to spend more time introducing myself and the campaign to black voters and voters of color. Uh, my centerpiece, this freedom dividend, is based upon a proposal that Martin Luther King championed yes. and was fighting for when he was killed in 1968. Mm -hmm. I had the privilege of sitting with Dr. King's son in Atlanta, and he said this was the vision that his father I was fighting for. That. So as soon as I get that message out to more black voters, I believe my poll numbers will shoot get up. Get the message now, then. Sure. We have to make the economy work for us, for you, for your families. And the best way to do that is to put money directly into your hands. Dr. King championed a guaranteed minimum income for all Americans, and that is exactly what I'm fighting for, a dividend of $1,000 a month for every American from the age of 18 until the day you die. This and would remake our work? economy around us and our families. How, how is that going to help us? Explain. How is that going to help, or how yeah. does it work? How, well, we well, both. both. I mean, how does Where do you get the money from? It, you threw it out Amazon. there. What is it going to do? Uh, so, <laughs> What's it going to do? Call oh, Amazon. Well, he's not wrong. So we have a trillion dollar tech company, Amazon, that's paying zero in taxes, less than everyone here in this room and everyone watching this at home. And Amazon. the whole country put yeah. together. Mm -hmm. Amazon's closing 30% of our stores and malls. Yeah. Uh, most common job in the country is retail clerk. Mm -hmm. Average retail clerk's a 39-year-old woman making between 8 and $10 an hour. Mm -hmm. So if we get Amazon to pay its fair share and Google and Facebook and Uber and Apple, we can generate hundreds of billions in new revenue, put it into our hands. So you're similar to Elizabeth Warren in economy. many ways, because she wants to take money from the very wealthy. He wants Same to take idea. it from tech, he wants to take it from I want to take it from tech. tech and the, the main just distinction tech. between me and Elizabeth is I just want to give the money to us, because I mm -hmm. think that we are better able to solve our own versus problems. Government. Yeah. Versus government. Directly. Yeah. Directly. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. Don't tighten up. Come back quick. We're coming back with more with Andrew Yang and his wife, Eva. <laughs> hey, we are back with Andrew Yang, and joining him is his wife, Evelyn Yang. Well, yeah, her last name <laughs> might be Yang. Yeah. 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 Evelyn, Evelyn. Hi, Evelyn. Welcome to the Hi. table. Yeah. Thank you. So much. Thank you. 
Well, you had a beautiful couple, I must say. So, um, am I call you Evelyn? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, your husband's campaign started with his Gmail list, <laughs> right? Yes. Okay. And now yes. he's raising and raised millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. What do you make of this? I mean, <laughs> uh, it's an amazing thing. He has all these uh, uh, Yang Gang people out there rooting for him. And he started really with very little. Amazing. I, yeah. When he first told me he was running for president, I have to say, I thought it was a phase, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, I get it. It was after was the last election, phase. and um, he <laughs> was pretty frustrated. Um, but, you know, it's, I think this is his passion uh, coming through. Like, he, that's, he convinced me when he started talking about the solutions that he had for the country, and I was like, these solutions should exist. Like, this is a good message, but maybe you don't have to be the one to deliver it. <laughs> and, you know, you can go out there, you can deliver it, and people will pick it up. When candidates start entering the race, they'll see that these are really practical, doable solutions that can improve the lives of everyday Americans. And he said, all right, well, I'm not so sure about that, but well, let's try. Let's try it. And, and it's resonating. Yeah. And that's the reason why he's come so far. Um, I think people can also tell that He's also a really genuine person. You know, yes. what you see is what yes. you get. We get that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, you don't always see that in politics. Right. You guys, not, you, he's not a politician. I love, and I, I, people find it very refreshing, and it's a great American story, and I think what this country is all about. Um, what I love Democracy. that you both do is mm -hmm. you're, you're, you share. You share personal experiences, and you share your life and your family with this country. You have two beautiful children. Christopher, your older son, is on the autism spectrum, and, and you mm -hmm. talk about that, and, and, and you hope to help other people. How did that diagnosis change, change your family and change just the way you think about things? Well, first of all, Christopher is so awesome. Yeah. He's just a wonderful kid. Yeah. And um, he made us parents, but he also made us better people. Um, and we talk about all the time how grateful and how blessed we are to have our two beautiful children. And, you know, the diagnosis is, is always difficult because you don't imagine, you know, when you imagine your children, you don't, Im you don't imagine this for them. Um, and then it happens, and, you know, for far too many Americans, they're faced with this reality and they don't have the resources that they need to get their child the support that he or she needs. And we're very lucky to have those resources. Yeah. So it's been really important for us to kind of share our story mm -hmm. and uh, just spread this awareness so that people know that it's much more common than you think. I mean, a Andrew talks about all the time how atypical is the new typical. Mm -hmm. um, we all know someone who's neurologically atypical or has a disability or a special need. And this is America. And we need to make America accessible for all and have those supports. Um, and it breaks my heart when I talk to families who don't have what they need and are just struggling uh, to, to get yeah. by and, yeah. and give their child, mm -hmm. you know, what they know they need. Yes. It's yeah. Well, Evelyn, you sound like a first lady to me right now. <laughs> but I will say um, if that... If that doesn't end up happening, if you don't end up taking it to the top, Mr. Yang, I have said on the show numerous times, my husband and I like to play fantasy campaign football, and you are my dark horse VP pick. I've seen some pictures of you and Joe Biden. If it ends up being him together, you guys look pretty cushy. If you were asked <laughs> to be vice president, would you accept that role? And would you, in turn, accept being the, you know, second lady, Evelyn? <laughs> Uh, I'm here to help solve the problems that affect us all that we're leaving for our kids. If that's as president, great. If that's in some other capacity, also great. Because we all need to do more uh, to help build. That yeah. 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 What about Evelyn? Now? I can confirm that is absolutely the truth. Would you guys be in for it, though? I would have to think about it mm -hmm. when it would have to be a conversation. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. <laughs> you know, like the conversation when we first embarked on yeah. this whole journey. Mm -hmm. you know, when, yeah. when people thank me for running, I say thank my wife, one, for letting me run, and for two, <laughs> sacrificing so much while I've been on the road. So thank you, yeah. baby. It's <laughs> worth You know, yeah. first of all, thank you for always coming and, and being a genuine person. And that answer, Mm -hmm. That answer is an answer I have never, I've never ever heard, it. heard yeah. anyone yeah. say, and I have mm -hmm. to say, my eyeballs are popping out. Yeah. And I'm thrilled yeah. to, to hear you say it's about 
to making the country better. Yeah. It's not about me and winning. I'll, yeah. it's and about, I'll do what I can. I'll yeah. do yeah. my I just Because everyone says I'm running yeah. for president. Right. I'm the best. Thank you. I'm the best. <laughs> well, you know what? Thank you. You're pretty great. Yeah. Our thanks to Andrew and Evelyn Yang.